In this two-part demo, we'll show you how to draft patterns directly in the 2D window. The first part will demonstrate how to create a dress like this in vStitcher. In the second part, we'll use the dress space we created to create an entirely new style. Let's start by creating a new garment. I'll use the Avatar Olivia in a size 38 or a US size 6. You can download Olivia size set from the Browser Cloud Library. Let's start by creating the pattern pieces in the 2D window, beginning with the front panel of the dress from a rectangular shape. Olivia's measurements are 1.67 in height, the bust is 90 and the waist is 71, the hips are 97, and her shoulders are 38. I'll be using Olivia's body measurements as the reference for the dress measurements as we don't have a size chart for this garment. I'll start with the hips measurements since this is the widest part of the garment. I'll round it up to 100, divide it by 4 so the width is 25. For the height, I'll choose a random number, so let's say 80. Using the pen tool, I'll divide the rectangle into intersections and create points to use later on. Note that edit point is enabled. To mark the points for the shoulder, I'll divide the shoulder width in half, 38 divided by 2 equals 19. The shoulder point should be 19 centimeters from the edge, and I'll turn this new point into a corner point. The next point will be for the neckline. I'll insert 7.5 as a starting point. We can change these numbers later if we're not satisfied with the results. To mark the placement for the hips, I'll measure 62 centimeters from the top. This time, I'll add a notch instead of a corner point. For the waist, I'll mark 42 from the top as well, and mark it with a notch. For the armhole, I'll use top left corner of the rectangle and lower it by 24 centimeters. For the shoulder slope, I'll drop this point 4.5 centimeters. And for the neckline, I'll drop this point by 8 centimeters. I created the rectangle base on the width of the hips. As the bust and the waist are narrower, I'll need to move these points slightly closer together. The bust width is 90. A quarter of it is 22.5, so I'll round it up to 23.5 and move the points inwards by 1.5 centimeters. To smoothen the line, we can use the points handles. Note that when holding shift, the handles automatically set as a straight line. Using the handles, I'll shape the armhole. It doesn't need to be exact at this point. We'll finalize the shape later on after reviewing it in the 3D window. To delete handles that are no longer needed, you can simply double click on them. For now, our front panel is ready. Let's move to the back panel. The easiest way to start is to clone the front panel. However, for this example, I'll use another method, using guidelines to create the shape. Note that the guideline icon is enabled. To create a guideline, simply pull it from the edge of the 2D window. The first guideline will be vertical. Let's clone it to mark all the measurements. For the hip width, I'll clone by offset by 25 cm. For the shoulders, by 19 cm. And by 7.5 cm for the neckline. Next, I'll add a new horizontal guideline and clone it by offset to mark the rest of the measurements. For the body length, clone by offset by 80 cm. For the hips, by 62 cm. For the waist, by 42 cm. And for the armhole, by 24 cm. For the shoulder and the shoulder slope, I would like to create the guideline at an angle. To do so, I'll clone it and in the context menu, adjust the angle to 16. However, we need it to face the opposite direction. So let's flip it and move it to the right position on the intersection between the guidelines. In order to trace the back panel accurately, let's activate snap to guideline. Since I would like to create the shoulder in a specific angle, I'll clone the horizontal guideline to get this angle and create the shape with the pen tool. Our back panel is almost done. We can now hide the guideline by right-clicking in the 2D window. Now, I'll make the same adjustment to the back panel as I did for the front. 
Holding shift while moving the handles will create 90 degree corners. I'll smoothen the line a bit. And the back shape is ready. Using the edge symmetry, I'll create the full shape. Let's check how these two shapes look when connected. To do so, I'll use the walk tool. We can see there's a small gap in the shoulder's width. Let's fix it. And I would like to bring this line a bit more to the inside. Here, I'll round the back a bit. Let's open up the 3D window and arrange the pieces. For the back piece cluster, I'll use the option flat with strap. Now we can stitch and dress. The simulation hasn't finished yet, but we can already see that there's extra fabric around the chest area. To fix that, I'll add a dart. With the pen tool, I'll mark the direction of the dart in the 3D window. To get a clearer view, I'll lower the opacity and change the avatar texture to fit markers. We can see that the dark is a little too low down. Let's insert a dart on this edge. The default size of the dart is 3cm by 10cm. We can shorten it to 9cm. In the context view, I can activate preview closed to see how the slash and spread will look when it's closed. Let's make the line a little smoother. Great! Now, let's go ahead and dress the garment. I can see that the armhole is too open. So I'll move this line slightly inwards. Let's continue by adding diamond darts using the insert tool. By holding shift, I can place the dart straight and in the context menu, I'll adjust its width. I would like to check the darts are placed exactly on the waistline. In the 3D window, I'll trace the waistline using the pen tool. Then in the 2D window, select the line and extend it to the edges. Zooming in, we can see that there's a small gap between the avatars and the garment's waistline. Using the measurement tool, we can see that it's 1.5 millimeters. I'll select the waist notch in the front and back pieces and lower it by 1.5 millimeters in the context menu. Now I can move the darts to the right place. Let's add diamond darts to the back as well. Adjust its size and dress. Now, I'll save a snapshot that I can refer to on later. Thanks for turning in to part one. In this demo, we walked through two methods of creating 2D patterns in vStitcher. Next up, in part two, we'll show you how to create a new style from the dress we just created. To learn more about pattern piece creation in vStitcher, visit our help center, help.browser.com.